15 years ago, a little studio from London called Firefly released its first game. That game was called Stronghold and it perfectly fulfilled a need which had gone for years untold unsatisfied. That primordial need that everyone has, no matter how old you are, to build your own castle. Now granted, you may say that Age of Empires does let you do something like that, but in no way near the exact same way that Stronghold did. I would hesitate to call Stronghold a deep game. It has enough depth to make it interesting. It doesn't have overly complex mechanics, which is something that actually helped it. It made it extremely accessible to people. And its building mechanics, although they were simple, they allowed you to build anything you wanted. Well, anything you wanted that could be made with a very simple set of tools that let you build straight walls in an isometric plane. But besides walls, you had gatehouses of various dimensions, you had a lot of towers, you had those crenellations that give walls that appearance of being fortified, and you had the semblance of an actual castle simulator. Although the main attraction of the game was the ability to build your own castle any way you wanted it, what really drew me to it was that it made you feel like you were in a medieval period. And it did so by showing you different aspects of that time. Most medieval games I had played up until then were just military focused. You built units, you went to war, your buildings were mainly there to produce units and be destroyed when the enemy came and then you rebuilt them. That's it. Stronghold didn't work like that. Well, actually it did, but it gave you the sense that there was more to it. While in something like Age of Empires you would have villagers that could then be used to collect resources and you had to build houses to increase your unit limit, Stronghold actually had villagers. Well, not villagers, the plebs. People that would just stand around and wait for you to summon them to duty to go become woodcutters, to go become stonemasons, to recruit them in your army. They would live in houses, they would have need of taverns and churches and the occasional garden to lounge in when they're not working and aren't afraid of you, but that's okay because they're happy so you can tax them more. It wasn't a very deep system of simulating the population, but it was just enough. Enough to make you feel like this game was more than just a combat game. It had small chains of resources that could be collected and processed in order to become more valuable and then be sold at the market or more than likely actually used in your own economy. For example, bread. To make bread to feed your people you needed a farm, you needed a windmill, you needed a bakery as well. It was the longest production chain in the game, I believe. Expensive to set up, not really all that space efficient, but hey, when it was functioning, you weren't at the mercy of your hunters not finding any more deer because they all died, you didn't have the problems of your people running out of food because all your farms were outside of the walls and you were under siege, which was a good thing because when you ran out of food, people would get upset and they would leave. You would no longer have people working, you would no longer have recruits for your army, you would be, in essence, dead. In that aspect it was more akin to something like settlers. Especially settlers. Because just as for me, Settlers 2 is one of the most relaxing experiences I've ever encountered in a game, so was Stronghold. Stronghold was, at its core, a very relaxing game. Most of the time, if I were playing a combat mission, I would just set the speed to the lowest setting possible or near to it, and just slowly plan out my buildings, my castle, my workers, and just enjoy the scenery. Running this game in the HD version that lets you run the resolution as high as you want really makes it look even better. It, it was gorgeous for me back in the day, though granted 
everything is made of little squares so don't expect any sort of rounded surfaces where you would expect them to be and the animations for the units were a bit janky but still running this on 1080p it looks absolutely marvelous and it sounds amazing the music is very well made and has that feeling to it that medieval feeling with choruses and lutes and at times you could actually get a bit intimidating either during a siege or actually during one of the first missions when wolves would attack you you have this little tiny insignificant outpost in the middle of nowhere and you were being attacked by wolves you had to produce archers to defend yourself this game set a superb mood in terms of atmosphere in terms of getting you in the mindset of this being a medieval world in which bad things happen because we don't have shotguns here you know it it really did a fine job probably better than most games i've played set in that period stronghold had several ways you could play it you could try the campaign in which you take the role of a young noble forced to flee and become leader of an army of rebels that try and retake their nation until the king comes with his army to restore order you could play as i don't exactly remember who you played as in a set of missions set after the events of the campaign in which you first had to collect enough resources for a proper celebration of your victory in the campaign then you had sieges and then you had free mode in free mode you could do anything you wanted build a castle just like you wanted to and create events like invasions or a circus coming around that would well make it more interesting not as boring as just building something until you get tired of it it also had a map editor where anything you placed on the map was instantly functional all game logics were intact if you were to put a rabbit and the wolf the wolf would eat the rabbit and the rabbits would start to multiply if the wolf didn't eat them if you put units from opposing factions next to each other they would kill each other if you were to put bears everywhere the bears started to kill everyone and if you put seagulls they would for some reason start to die off about 30 seconds after you put them on the map the sad part was that the map editor had a unit limit that also was influenced by the number of animals you had there so you couldn't have just one gigantic map that was half rabbits and half wolves that would have been amazing i believe you can do that in one of the sequels what the game actually lacked was a single player skirmish mode you could not just fight the ai each of you building your own castle and just going at it later when you felt like it though you could do that in the multiplayer mode i believe i've never actually played the multiplayer mode of the original stronghold mostly because when i had the game I didn't actually have internet or anyone to play it with in LAN. And not long after, Stronghold Crusader came along that changed the setting and added skirmish. Now many would say this Stronghold Crusader is the best of them because mechanically, well not mechanically but feature wise, it is the most complete of them, it is the perfect one. And I'd say it is, but thematically the original one was the most fleshed out the one that stuck with me the one that felt so alive stronghold may just be as close as i'll ever get to playing a medieval city builder you may notice that there is not a lot of medieval city builders around even though it makes a lot of sense for there to be one some time ago i spoke to chris beatrice the lead designer of pharaoh and zeus about his new game called medieval mare which was a continuation of the classical impression games city builder and he said that making a medieval city builder made a lot of sense because this was a period when technology was just beginning to be rediscovered the world was plunged in a dark age of ignorance and violence and there there you had the ability to just rise from the ashes to build up a city to build up a civilization to rebuild society when you think about it a medieval setting is a bit 
is a bit post-apocalyptic in nature, being set after the fall of one of the largest civilizations that ever existed, the Roman Empire. And granted, Stronghold is not as deep a city builder as the Tilted Mill game would have been or as the Impression games games were, but it had just enough of everything, just enough city building, just enough management, just enough combat. And combat that was done quite better than in every title made by Impression Games. I do encourage you to try and play Stronghold. You can find the HD version of it on Steam and GOG and, and just about everywhere for about 5 euros and 40 euro cents or 6 bucks I would say. Now there was time when, when I couldn't find this game. Like I could not just find it at all. And now I own it in two versions on at least three digital distribution platforms along with the rest of the series. If you enjoyed this show, hit the like button, subscribe and share it with your friends. Or if you thought it was horrible, then share it with your enemies and make them suffer. We shall be your weapon of vengeance. But if you liked what you saw, you could, I don't know, maybe donate because basically YouTube is horrible at revenue by using the link in the description or just buy my book. It's a fantasy book about, well, a lot of stuff. I guarantee it won't suck, and if it does suck, you can find me here and complain about it.